everyone, my name is Dr. Asma Veka and I'm from the Department of Chemistry at University of University of Nigeria. And on behalf of Tabita A. Asma I'm here to present our research work titled African Shell Butter as a Vital Bio Product. Now, uh, human and environmental safety have really become so topical in the present generation and it's because of the sophistication of the environment with a pollutant. And these pollutants are also sometimes present in the product that we consume. Uh, for this uh, reason, a lot of people now are craving out for a safer uh, product. And uh, talking about safer product in this particular presentation, we are going to introduce to you a uh, share uh, butter. Share butter is non toxic, uh, bio renewable uh, product, and share butter has a lot of uh, applications. Uh, share butter has actually been used in production of uh, food products, it's also used in production of personal and cosmetic uh, uh, products. Shea butter really has a lot of medicinal applications. Uh, it is used especially in the treatment of, uh, of skin and disease. Now, uh, shea butter is majorly produced from West and Central uh, Africa. And uh, the problem is that in as much as uh, shea butter is really good, uh, the shea nut which we use in the production of shea uh, butter are grossly uh, under uh, maximized. It is for this reason that we wish to uh, draw people's attention uh, for the purpose of enhancing the production of a uh, shea uh, butter. Now, uh, this is how the shade tree uh, looks like. Uh, the shade tree with the fruits on it. Uh, the fruits are actually edible, while the nut inside we use it for the production of a uh, uh, shade uh, butter. And this is uh, the fruits. Uh, the pulp of these fruits are actually edible, while the nut inside we uh, can use it in the production of a uh, uh, shade butter. Uh, now, when you have a look at the shade nuts, 41% uh, of it is water, 21% is uh, oil. Why about 20% uh, of it uh, is the husk, and then uh, the residue has 18% uh, in that uh, uh, shea nut. Now, in general speaking, we have two methods of production of uh, uh, the shea butter from the shea nut. We have traditional and then the solvent extraction method. In the traditional method, you need to actually get a dry shea nut, and then you grind this shea nut, and you knead it, okay, into a paste. With that paste, you add hot water to it. You allow the mixture to stand for a period of eight hours. At the end of that time, the product will be formed on the surface of that mixture. Then you can uh, collect your product. Now, for the solvent extraction, you also need to make use of a paste. We have earlier said that for you to form a paste, you need to grind a dry shell nut. From there, you will knead it. That is by adding a little quantity of water to the uh, ground dry shell nut. Uh, you can mix it together, then you will have your paste. And with that paste, you will then add hot water to read, followed by hexane. Now, the ratio of addition of these uh, materials and reagents is that you have two gram part of uh, the pest is to one gram part of water is to two mil part of hexane. After adding all these materials together and reagents, you allow them to stand for a period of 48 hours. At the end of that period, it's expected that most of the product will be transported into the organic phase. From there, you will separate the organic phase from the rest of the mixture. You can then recover your product uh, from that uh, organic uh, uh, phase. Now, uh, this is how the paste look like. We have earlier said, how do you obtain this paste? You need to dry your shea now. From there, you grind it. After grinding, you add a little quantity of water and then you knead it together. You can have this paste. The paste then becomes uh, a basic uh, material for the extraction uh, of your shea butter, both the traditional and the solvent extraction method uh, so far. Now, these are some of the major uh, chemical constituents that are present uh, in the uh, uh, in the shea nut. That is the important uh, classes of chemicals. We have fatty acid, we have vitamins, and we have antioxidant. Okay, uh, it is this particular chemical that uh, chemicals that give a shea butter uh, their unique uh, characteristics. Now, uh, thus far, uh, these are some of the samples of the common products which we can uh, uh, produce from a shea butter, uh, cosmetic product, a personal care product, and then uh, importantly, shea butter also can be used in the production of chocolate, and that is very, very great application. We have earlier said that uh, impo uh, another important application is that we use shea butter in treatment of uh, skin disease, and this is how important and how versatile this product is actually is. And for this reason, uh, we wish to say that shea butter is non toxic and a bioremeable uh, product, and therefore we really need to conserve uh, and sustain uh, uh, and this product. And how do we conserve and sustain this product? We have to first of all conserve the shea trees which we uh, which produce the fruit from which we can get our uh, uh, our shea butter. We really have to understand that the shea tree can actually grow uh, on their own, or they can be cultivated. 
So the, the current trend is that most of these trees that grow on their own, people indiscriminately cut down these trees for whatever reason. And that is not really good because with those, with those, those shade trees, we will not be able to maximize the production of shade butter. And therefore, it is important that there should be regulations and policies on ground that can actually uh, restrain people from indiscriminately cutting down some of these uh, shade, uh, shade trees. And uh, importantly, uh, we should understand that uh, there's a lot of uh, demand of resources in the present generation because of uh, population growth. And if we're not careful and we're not really maximizing and sustaining the resources we have, then we'll actually run into a, a resource uh, a problem. And that is why it is important that we should actually conserve and sustain uh, the little resources that we have at our disposal. We also need to understand that even the future generation, we also need to depend on these resources we, we are currently using. And so if we do not sustain and conserve it, then the future generation will actually blame us for the action or the inaction we have actually uh, uh, taken. Another way we can also maximize the production of shape water is that uh, we would use another solvent extraction technique, which is a supercritical CO2 extraction uh, uh, technique. And uh, it is expected that supercritical CO2 extraction technique will give us a better quality of shape water. And therefore, we wish to make it as a recommendation that people should look forward to uh, using this technique in the extraction of uh, shape water as we are looking forward for uh, the time of generation of maximizing the production of uh, a shape water. Please, on behalf of Tabita A. Asimavi, I really wish to appreciate International General of Science and Research for the opportunity we have to share this work orally and uh, also um, if for people that are looking out for details of this uh, particular presentation, uh, please may you refer to the paper that we have published titled African Shape Water as a Stable and Renewable and renewable by a product. We have published this paper with International Union of Science and Research in the year 2015. Thank you and have a nice time.